and welcome to the News X Sunday Guardian Roundtable. Well, as the Modi government is all set to complete three years in office, we are here going to be taking a look at his both highs and lows and also taking a look at what he should focus on for the rest of his tenure. Joining me on the roundtable is Aarti Jairat, she's a commentator, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, he's an NDA MP, Dr. Subramanian Swami, a BJP leader and Rajya Sabha MP, Jay Panda, he's from the BJD, a Lok Sabha MP. I'll begin with you and, well, I want to just put in a caveat, since we don't have a Congress spokesperson here, we're going to try and keep it uh, non-partisan and basically focus on, Dr. Swami, <laughs> we're going to be focusing on, uh, take an objective look at the government. You mean as an economist? As an economist, that's okay. right. <laughs> so I'm going to begin with you. How would you rate the government? Well, overall, I would give it a... Uh, as a, an economist? A grade, hmm. because there is no allegation against the government. Uh, that's a big thing. I mean, three years gone by, they may say this, this, is, this policy is soft and that you're just for Tumaha, that we are too Hindu, too. all that it can be sent. But broadly speaking, I find my carders, party carders very pleased with the state of affairs. Okay. And that's a big thing and the results are there also, uh, which show that uh, generally public also is willing to give him a chance. Even on demonetization, I was surprised people said, but his heart is in the right place, that sort of thing. There are sectors which uh, have not been uh, as good as I would have liked it. And uh, I said, I think that on Kashmir, we need to be a little harder. Mm. Uh, we need to be harder with Pakistan too. If we're being uh, an economist, I, I, that's where my expertise is. Mm. There I would say that we should have managed to attain at least 10% growth rate given the potential strength of the government. But uh, statistics presented in Parliament, so I can't even uh, make up my own statistics to defend the party. But in Parliament show uh, the medium and small uh, industries have been hit very, very hard. And that's partly because we had this sorcerer called Raghuram Rajan, hmm. who kept raising the interest rates and not realizing the economy is a general equilibrium system. So you raise the interest rates, Maybe you can control uh, inflation, but then you raise the cost of capital. So those who depend on the local market for capital, as opposed to big corporations which can take money from abroad, uh, they have collapsed. And I have statistics here from Parliament okay. which show that the NPAs of, uh, of these small, medium, uh, small and medium industries has gone up from uh, 36,000 in 2013. Hmm to 1,22,000 crores. And even industrial growth rate is hovering around 4%, 3%, which I've got statistics for. Hmm. So I think uh, uh, I would give B- minus to the economy. But the overall governance, I would give A. I'm not, why am I not surprised with that verdict? Jeff Anna, your overall look at the last three years. I think the major success has been foreign policy because uh, this Prime Minister surprised everybody by being so enthusiastic about foreign policy. And if you go around the world, as some of us do, in every capital of the world, mm. India is the toast of the town. Uh, India is being called uh, a success story all over again after about a dozen years of uh, having lost that sheen. Even in the neighborhood, uh, the outreach to Pakistan, of course, has not worked. Everybody knows that. But I think the intent was shown by the outreach. And what has happened successfully for the first time in three decades mm. is that a two-speed policy is working. The rest of SARC is very clearly not going to get tied down by Pakistan's dog-in-the-manger attitude. And you see recently with the satellite launch and many other uh, uh, co-events, uh, clearly that is, I think, a major success is foreign policy, including our near neighborhood. Okay. Now, if you look at the economy, I'm a bit more optimistic than what Dr. Swami just pointed out because clearly the economy has turned around. Yes, we can argue it should have been 10% growth rate or 9% growth rate, but it has turned around. And as I said earlier, it's being celebrated around the world as one of the major economic engines today, the fastest growing large economy. Uh, inflation has been kept under control. I think that's a, that's a very big achievement. But yet, on the economic front, I would say the following. The Prime Minister himself gave a, uh, an ambitious goal in his first few weeks that on the ease of doing business index of mm. the World Bank and the World Economic Forum, we ought to be in the top 50. 
Now we have improved from the 140 odd, but not by much, by only about 15 or 20 positions. That's a gradual improvement. I wish more drastic action had been taken to level the playing field for investments and Faster. for small and medium enterprises that we should have gone into the top 100 by this time. Uh, if you look at, uh, the, you know, there are many, the, the mm. infrastructure front has revived. You can see tremendous infrastructure growth happening uh, on highways and on many other fronts. I would say that in terms of what could have been handled better is uh, perhaps this issue of vigilantism could have been handled better. Yeah, that's, now that's a complex subject. Mm. It's not a black and white subject as often some in the media would mm. like to portray it. But I think perhaps, and also it's mostly a state subject being a law and order issue, but it does reflect uh, on a nation, and I think perhaps that could have been handled better uh, in, in some ways. Yeah, and I'm going to come back to that in a bit, but Aarti, statistics aside, what is the perception of the Modi government? Well, you know, I, I would like to look at the Modi government through two prisms. Uh, mm -hmm. One is the political prism and the other is the governance prism. Okay. I think through the, if you look at it on the political front, I, I think Modi has never been stronger than he is today. You know, that victory in UP and then, of course, the way he just sort of decimated uh, Arvind Kejriwal in Delhi, thereby, I think, wiping out a, a person who was positioning himself as a potential challenger in 2019. Mm. And, you know, you can see the opposition is pretty demoralized. Uh, they really don't know what to do. They're trying to do this sort of tacky, uh, you know, anti-Modi front, uh, you know, whether that can actually be a glue to, you know, for them to sink their differences and get together or whether that will only serve to, uh, because, you know, Modi is so good at u using, uh, you know, uh, his adversaries that, you know, it may actually serve to strengthen him. Hmm. So I think politically he's in a very good place today after three years and that says a lot for somebody who's been in power, you know, for three years and, uh, uh, you know, usually the, the honeymoon period is over, the ratings mm. start falling, but he's really, very, he is in a good place today. On the governance front, I think there are many, many challenges that lie ahead and I would rate Kashmir as, some, as one of the biggest challenges because although Dr. Swami talks about being, uh, you know, sort of harsher, but, you know, I mean, how harsh can you be to people who are your own citizens? I mean, can you ask the army to actually shoot down people who are your own citizens, whether they're Muslims or they're Hindus? That's not the point. The point is that they're Indian citizens. Okay. And I don't think that you can, and even if they're spelting you with stones and they've turned hostile, I mean, recently they did this dastardly thing of abducting this, uh, you know, young Kashmiri officer from his home. I mean, that's happened in the past also. It's not the first time that this has happened. At the height of militancy in the 90s, they, I think several army officers were abducted from the their homes. Kashmiri. and the, the first Kashmiri, Kashmiri, but they have abducted army officers yes, of from their homes. So, you know, I mean, I think that's a really big challenge which he will have to address over the next two years. And it's very complex, very complicated because, you know, uh, Pakistan comes into it and, uh, you know, it's not just a domestic issue, but it is also an international issue. China, we don't know what kind of role China will play. It's been blowing hot and cold, making, you know, sometimes friendly noises, sometimes very hostile noises. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so we'll have to see how that pans out. As far as the economy is concerned, I mean, yes, uh, you know, India is the toast of, uh, you know, the world and everything. But I think we still don't know the full effects of demonetization. I think those still have to unravel themselves, uh, you know. And unfortunately, since demonetization has hit the organ unorganized sector the most, hmm. it's going to be very difficult to get the statistics of how much it has really hit the unorganized sector. For the organized sector, I think they more or less sort of put demonetization behind them and, you know, sort of come out of it. But it's those small, small guys, you know, the small the small scale industries and, you know, the small shop owners, the small traders, you know, they've all been very badly hit. So we'll have to see how that pans out. But politically, and I mean, they're the ones who have also went there. Yes, and actually, this, so, so this is the paradox know. that, you know, demonetization was a really smart political move, which, which I mean, contrary to what we all thought, you know, it really has worked in, uh, you know, Narendra Modi's favor. Yeah. But, you know, the effect on the economy, and that's what we'll have to see over the next, uh, you know, year or so. Two years to go. Raji, your take on the last three years. So I think, uh, Priya, when you do an analysis of how far the government has come in three years, mm. it's important to know where the government or where the country was in 2014 May. Uh, and I think if you don't, in a sense, reiterate that or remind ourselves of that, you won't understand how far we've actually traveled. Okay. 
uh, in 2014 may we had had we had, had 12 successive quarters of declining growth we had had almost 14 quarters of unbridled inflation all of the major indices whether the current account deficit fiscal deficit trade deficits were all in the negative and they were becoming worse there was a crisis of confidence amongst investors after the 2g scam and the colgate scam there was capital flow out of the country now you if you look at that as a starting point and see where you are today we are at a record fdi of 151 billion dollars in 3 years we are at 12 quarters of successive growth hmm. except for one or two quarters in between in 16 17 where we actually took a dip all of the other indices whether they are current account whether we are talking about inflation or fiscal they are all in the positive territory this has happened despite the fact that we inherited or this government inherited and sorry for the freudian we inherited thing but well, nearly the, there. Government, <laughs> the government the well, government inherited yeah so yeah so so, so, let, me, so let me go back yeah. to saying we inherited <laughs> the uh, republic of we modi inherit, <laughs> we inherited an npa situation in the banking system that is still not fixed hmm. and despite a almost non functional dysfunctional banking system that continues to be a problem today and is not providing credit hmm. to major sectors of the society, uh, to the economy the economy has grown on the back of government consumption and the back of personal consumption so while we can argue that there are some things that could have been done better there are some things that could still need to be done we have traveled from the precipice of an economic disaster to what uh, jay said is an economy that is one of the fastest growing strongest growing most sustainably growing economies in the world number 1 number 2 again go back to 14 what did we all what were we all saying the government of india at that point was plagued with scams was dysfunctional was almost frozen in terms of activity and action mm. and now we have a government that is being recognized and almost indisputably uh, uh, you know you there's a concession that they are hard working hard charging you take a you know there may be an ideological dispute about demonetization but the fact is it was taken and it was delivered there is a cleaning up of the government and government institution that has happened in the last 3 years that you should not uh, let us say underplay it has significantly increased the perception of the quality of governance in delhi and that is why you have 151 billion dollars in fdi rather than uh, outflow of fdi as you saw in 2014 so net net i am not a report card person as uh, dr swami is <laughs> but i second uh, him by saying that there is an a here Hmm. for the overall distance that the government and the economy has traveled that agree uh, there may be areas that you want to give it a b uh, there may be areas like you say on the national security front that we could have done better or we will need to do better hmm. but overall um, uh, from as a citizen or as a as a political participant i think this is a, a good place to be okay before i go on to what should be his immediate focus for the next two years dr sami there is also a perception that is prime minister modi or modi doing well on his own or because there is no opposition you know we ask who else do we vote for they say i think with his kind of personality is very difficult to have an opposition i mean the opposition has to try very hard and nitish kumar managed small victories but yeah well, there, there there was a slight miscalculation according to me which we never repeated afterwards that is the cadre is motivated by hindutva hmm. and uh, in bihar we went to the other extreme and the cadre didn't work uh, and this is what happened with vashpai 2 in 19 and 2004 so after that that uh, course correction was made and uh, we have never lost an election but the issue is uh, the point that he makes is that in the international Hmm. uh arena it is regarded as one of the most uh, uh, sorry for using uh, a strong uh, word which uh, has double meaning but uh, it's one of the most virile governments that we have yes. uh people know that uh, we can act hmm. the, the surgical strike is an example uh where earlier on people used to say if you do this they will throw the atom bomb but he showed that they are paper tigers uh so he has uh, that power of making decisions which is appeals this uh, demonetization i don't know what the economic effect is because as she says the informal sector data is still not in correct you huh. need a sample survey national sample survey has hmm. not completed a survey but the public has accepted it hmm. i have met people who have argued with me 
saying, no, no, he has shown the, uh, these uh, the rich. Uh, rich people. It's like saying uh, only one, one eye went, but my, the rich guys, both eyes went. <laughs> you know, the old Indian story about mm. that. So he has uh, understood the chemistry of the people. And with that kind of thing, it's very difficult to have an opposition. It has to be a very skillful. Secondly, I think, frankly, this is my opinion. I, I try to be as rational as possible. Uh, that this new, we have, got, we have given a new uh, ideological framework for the country in which nationalism has become That's... a very important part. Hmm. Now, unless the uh, opposition comes up with an uh, alternative version of nationalism, Fair people are not going to accept it. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to come back and also talk about what is working for Modi and also the narrative of nationalism. How is the opposition going to handle that? So stay with us. Welcome back to the NewsX Sunday Guardian Roundtable. We are taking a look at the last three years of the Modi government and also a look ahead. Uh, Jay, before we went in for a break, he said that what's working for Prime Minister Modi is that he's got the chemistry of the people right and the opposition doesn't have a credible narrative. Is this narrative of nationalism what is really working? You know, what had happened over recent decades hmm. was um, a sort of drift in the national narrative where speaking up for India was seen as somehow um, passé and not cool. Uh. Uh, and so in that sense, the Prime Minister has grabbed that space that he stands for a, an assertive, muscular India, uh, which is benevolent in its relationship with the rest of the world, but is not ashamed of being uh, the, the success story of the world in this age. Now, this is not isolated to India. Mm. If you see what is happening around the world, there is a movement of assertion, of assertiveness of nationalism. Uh, whether it is uh, uh, Erdogan France. in in Turkey, whether it is uh, not in France. Trump, not in France. She's not yes, in France. in France, because and not in South Korea. If you stop interrupting, let me explain. <laughs> the, the problem with, with the problem with some of the narrative champions of the earlier era, which has been wiped out, is that difficult to listen to the new viewpoint which is prevailing. <laughs> so Macron, <laughs> Macron is is certainly not the leftist Absolutely. that the French would have normally elected. Absolutely. Yes, he's not Le Pen, but he is a considerable way away from the left extreme hmm. that people like Arti would have really wanted France to elect. Uh, sorry, now, now, I didn't say that I'm a left extreme. Sorry. Uh, all right, I mean, you're trying to put me in the category of a Maoist or you what? Asked, you asked for it. <laughs> you interrupted and asked for it. How did I ask so for anyway, it? let me complete my, let me complete allow my story. Allow you to twist my uh, beliefs. We want him in BJP. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. Let me, He's let me learning explain. well. On every show of mine, Dr. Swami invites someone to join the BJP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually it's Manish Tiwari, not Jepal. Let me explain. He's learning the tactics well. Let me take this forward. Arti said that people like us did not expect that demonetization would succeed. Sorry, on this show and on many shows, while demonetization was happening, I championed it energetically yeah. because I spend half the month, every month in the field meeting thousands of people. And I argued with many of our friends who mm. had the same view. And I said, I'm sorry, the poor are very much in favor of it. And I got trolled, I got attacked. <laughs> Just like I got attacked just now. This is the whole narrative so, that the guy is so, spinning. So, so Sorry, so the point yes. is this. you were the attacking is, me. That whole narrative has got swept away. Hmm. And there are still members of the former establishment that are struggling to come to grips with the new narrative. So the point I'm trying to make is, there is, if you look at the past decade, hmm. around the world, a gradual shift to the right. Uh, you can't deny that, and as I said, even Macron represents a shift to the right of what normally would have been a yeah, leftist right. candidate who would have won. Hmm. Now, uh, so in that sense, I think Prime Minister Modi is one among a handful of leaders around the world who are at the forefront of this gradual rightward shift. What is the rightward shift all about? In my opinion, it is a reaction against political correctness about saying things that ought to be said rather than saying it as it actually is. I thought it's the, the other ground. way around actually. No, it's not true. If you, look at the, if you look at Trump's campaign, you look at Le Pen's campaign, you look at uh, even Macron's campaign, you look at Erdogan's campaign, mm. you look at Modi's campaign, it is to speak blunt truths that the public holds true, but that many narratives, particularly in mainstream media, uh, do not recognize. 
Do we recognize now, I don't manager? want to get personal with Jay, mm -hmm. so I shall avoid that. He's a likable guy, very you can get personal. With me. But, uh, you send know, him a tweet later. <laughs> yeah, I'll send him a tweet later. <laughs> <laughs> but on the... But, you know, so, mm -hmm. yes, there is a rightward shift, and I think that there was a right... The, this rightward shift has been happening in India as well. If you look at the economy, I mean, the rightward shift on the economic I front began. Saying there wasn't a rightward shift when I said so. No, I didn't. She said that France was not the rightward shift. Yeah, I talked about she France. So hmm. That's why I'm saying, don't twist. You know, you must listen. <laughs> I think you need to learn to listen to people so that you understand he's what they're saying. He's giving a taste of journalistic yeah. medicine to you. <laughs> no, he's not. He's, he's, you got yourself a lawyer. He's, he's behaving like a BJP spokesperson. <laughs> this is what they do on he's all welcome. television shows. He's welcome. There. <laughs> yeah, I know. He'll do better than me. <laughs> Jay is still thinking of so the rightward shift on the economic front began in the 90s mm. and actually the person who did it was n none other than Manmohan Singh himself. And you know, right through Manmohan Singh's tenure, mm. the 10 years, I think he kept trying to take the economy rightwards. He also, if you remember, he, he took a, a definite, uh, he shifted the foreign policy narrative as well because he was the one who was so keen on a closer relationship with the United States. And if you remember that famous quote of his telling Bush, the people of India love you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that, yeah. that it all began then. Mm. Yes, Modi has taken it forward. He's been more open about it, more muscular about it. But, I mean, you know, this shift has been happening. But, you know, I think the thing is that nationalism and ultra-nationalism, as we're seeing it unfold here in India, is that it is taking a very um, disturbing religious color. Mm. And, you know, for a country like India, which has so many different religions, which is so multi-ethnic, so multicultural, so multi-religious, you know, nationalism cannot be defined in religious terms. And that is, I fear, you know, the thing that is dangerous. You know, the economy and so on, I think, is very much in keeping with what is happening worldwide. Probably, yeah. And I think what Macron represents, as against Le Pen, is precisely this, that Macron, Macron was, you know, is rightward looking in his economic policies. But, you know, on, on the social front, on the, you know, on the whole question of immigration and, you know, multi-religious, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, policies and so on, he's different from Le Pen. Le Pen is far right. He's very much centrist. Now, may I, so may social, I yeah. defend uh, my friend here? <laughs> Next time I'll do a round table on Jay Panda. Okay. <laughs> Let him come in, then you. <laughs> Next round table, we're going to discuss you. What is the question? You have asked the narrative question. of nationalism, are you comfortable with it? Or do no, you actually, uh, especially look, the, it's, why is it taking such a stride in religious No, tone? no, I think that is, uh, with again, great respect to Arti, I think that's in her head. I don't think nationalism is being identified. I tend to agree with her. There no, 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 I don't think it I, I identifies with any religion. I think, I, who, who says that it nationalism? Should not. It should not, and it is the not. Risk of being I think, of yeah, I think, uh, I think there is clearly a move towards uh, getting the discourse of nationalism back on the table. Hmm. It was, as Jay very correctly said, for for many many years, ultra passe to talk about being patriotic, ultra passe to talk about uh, being. And I've been 11 years in Delhi as a parliamentarian, and I know. When we used to, I used to stand up in Parliament and raise issues of the armed forces. You can see what the one rank, one pension took 42 years of Congress neglect. It has taken this government to do something about it. That is nationalism. Nationalism is not only about draping yourself in a flag and talking a particular language. There are certain things that make you nationalistic, that, that, make you, that define your nationalism. And that debate is good. That discussion is good. I don't see... Uh, any reason for anybody to be uncomfortable with that. But having said that, your main question was about why is the opposition so much in a tizzy with this narrative? And that is because they have played a very strange game of politics hmm. for many, many decades. And now the, the debate and discourse has been moved by Prime Minister Modi into simple truths. There is no room for the rhetoric. There is no room for the typical left liberal, um, you know, the complicated speak that often clouds what the real issue is. If we have a problem with Pakistan, we've spent a decade of doing this candlelight uh, stuff and not uh, and ducking the reality that they are an, a sponsor of terrorism. So I think all of that is coming to the fore. And the fact that the opposition really does not have, and this is the plain simple truth, does not have a counter narrative. Whether it is the economy, whether it is the governance, whether it's about nationalism, whether it's about terrorism, apart from saying Prime Minister Modi is doing wrong, hmm. they don't have any alternative narrative that is 
even remotely compelling to a normal Indian. So therefore, they continue to play the game, which is Prime Minister Modi is a, is a, is a, is a bigot. Prime Minister Modi is encouraging uh, Gaurakshaks. Prime Minister Modi is doing this. Prime mm. Minister Modi is doing that. But that is not a narrative. That is just basically you know, critiquing or criticizing a man who is not necessarily responsible for any of those things. So if the opposition wants to be relevant, I think they will have to right. re-architect, reinvent, rediscover a, 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 a narrative that is real and not yeah. sort of uh, play, uh, you know, be piggybacking on some flaws or mistakes that the government or, makes. Or, or going but, off to London off and on. Yeah, <laughs> or, and, or that. Also that. But I've been, we don't have a congressperson here, but I've been speaking to them and they would off record do tend to agree with what is being said here. The fact that they don't have a credible narrative of their own. A lot of them say we can't just keep fact checking the Modi government. We need to get our own narrative in place. Well, they've got two more years to do that. But from us, that's all this week. Thank you for watching this show. We'll see you again same time next week.